will now recite the sorrowful mysteries of the Rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the first sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the agony in the garden. In his anguish, Jesus prayed with all the greater intensity, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he rose from prayer and came to his disciples only to find them asleep, exhausted with grief. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all the souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. In the second sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the scourging at the pillar. Pilate's next move was to take Jesus and have him scourged. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> o my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. In the third sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the crowning with thorns. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak, weaving a crown of, out of thorns, they fixed it on his head and stuck a reed in his right hand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Hail
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. In the fourth sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the carrying of the cross. Carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. In the fifth sorrowful mystery, we contemplate the crucifixion. Jesus uttered a loud cry and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. After he said this, he expired. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Eternal rest granted to him, O oh Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. According to the intentions of the Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
morning to you all and welcome to St. Philip's Church for this Requiem Mass for Anthony Dale. Uh, Anthony uh, had a home here, uh, had a, a seat that he always sat in every Sunday when he would get here early uh, to pray and prepare for Mass. So uh, we acknowledge him today and, and offer him, commend his soul uh, back to our loving Father. Uh, and I offer the sincerest condolences of the parish, the parishioners, uh, to you all as we farewell this great man and uh, Valerie and all the family you are in our prayers today. Uh, before the Mass begins, Christopher is going to offer some words of remembrance on behalf of the family, so I invite him to come forward now to deliver those. Thank you, Christopher. First of all, I just wanted to say to, particularly to all the people who are watching this online, so that's our family from all over the world, including Canada and England, um, people throughout Melbourne and uh, within Victoria. Uh, many of our friends are watching this online. We thank you very much from um, Jane, Joe, and my mum and myself. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your support and all your best wishes. We much appreciate that. So I prepared something that's about 10 minutes long, so it's not too long. Um, Anthony Charles Hughesdale is survived by his wife, Valerie, his children, myself, Joanna, and Jane his daughter-in-law, Julia, sons-in-law, Doug and Nick, and grandchildren, here's the list, Tim, Sarah, Bridget, Gabby, Georgia, John, Emma, Alec, and of course the twins, Lockie and Charlie, uh, as well as Dominic and Elizabeth. Also, we remember Penelope, who's living in England, is his sister. Dad, Anthony, Ant, as mum called him, Tony, or as he preferred to be called by all of the grandchildren, Opa. He was born in the heart of London on the 2nd of June, 1934. To his parents, Charles Hughesdale, uh, who was a general practitioner, who was always called Hugh, and Phyllis Lucy Knee Spring, who was a nurse. Dad had a slightly younger twin brother, Colin, so he was the oldest, and a sister Penelope, who was six years and one day younger. They lived in East Coat, northwest London, and although Dad's dad was a doctor, his mum was a nurse, his twin brother became a doctor and then on, went on to become a, an ear, nose and throat surgeon. His mum was a nurse, Dad just had to be different and he qualified as a chartered accountant. It might have been something to do with the fact that he couldn't stand the sight of blood. At the age of five, Dad and Colin, the twins, were sent to a primary boarding school away from London in Crowthorne, soon after World War II had started. And the reason for this is so they could be protected in the countryside from the anticipating bombings from the Germans in the war which turned out to be a good move, because they landed everywhere. Dad didn't spend that much time at home, um, although he does, does have some good stories from his ha house, because um, so, he and Colin were sent to secondary boarding school in the country as well. The school was called Arndel, and it was located near Peterborough, about 130 kilometres north of London. 
Dad had many fond memories of school, he, and he made some very good friends. And three of his closest were Sam Bancroft, Dave Picard, and Roger Pratt. He kept in touch with the school and past students via the old Andelian network called the OOs. Dad was a good student. He completed his A-levels. Not everyone went on to finish school in those days. Uh, so that he achieved his A-levels, uh, which is pretty similar to doing your VCE now. Uh, his specialty was history. And he used to impress us with his knowledge of the British monarchy and political history, especially of England. He loved to read, in particular, he loved to read about Sir Winston Churchill and Disraeli, among other people. And as all the family know, he's got a very extensive book collection for all you kids to read, of course, at uh, Henry Street in the library. Dad played cricket and rugby for his schoolhouse. His house was called Dryden, which was named after a British poet from the 17th century. He enjoyed cross-country running. However, it was Colin who excelled at sport, and Colin, his twin brother, earned the school colours for sport in rowing and gymnastics. Dad had an adventurous spirit. He loved to travel, and, he lo and it started at quite an early age. He um, went on many sailing trips, adventurous trips, I won't call them holidays because I don't call sailing a holiday, but um, he went on trips on a couple of yachts, one called Bittern and the other one called Tuscar. There were two small yachts that he owned with his, one of his best friends, Roger. This included adventures on the yachts across the English Channel to France, Belgium and Holland. He also learnt to downhill ski, well, sort of, anyway. And he had some wonderful holidays in the European Alps. Dad met Mum, Valerie June Booth, who was also a nurse, via friends and strong connection to the Pinna Lawn Tennis Club, where they used to play tennis. However, it took a number of years and several proposals before mum, mum finally accepted one and they ended up being married at St. Teresa's Catholic Church in Wilmslow, which is near Manchester in the northwest of England. This is on the 27th of April, 1963, so they've been married for 57 years. I was born in the following May, and Joanna was born two years later. So Joe and I are both Poms. However, Jane is the only true blue Aussie. She was born in Melbourne. Good on Jane. Uh, about a year after we migrated to Australia in 1966. Dad had accepted a job in Melbourne with accounting firm Price Waterhouse & Co. Dad was only 32, and I think um, there's a photograph on the front of the booklet of Dad at Price Waterhouse. He was 32 when he started in the audit division, but through hard work, he made his way through the ranks and became a partner at age 40. He remained with Price Waterhouse for the rest of his career until he retired at age 60. He, he had some wonderful experiences with travelling with Price Waterhouse. In particular, he took up a short-term role in Indonesia and he also accepted a three-year stint as partner in charge of Lay Office based in Papua New Guinea. It was a very different experience to living and working in Melbourne. 
Dad made some long-term friends at Pricewaterhouse. In particular, some of them were Chris Goliath, Ken Gutteridge, Russell Henry, Russell Chancellor, Ralph Morris, Stuart Edwards, Nigel Chadwick, Elizabeth Alexander, Andrew Campbell, Leanne Gow, and of course, Mary Ludlow, who was a secretary of Dad's for many, many years. Mum and Dad bought a block of land in Warrandyte and built a home on the block a few years later in 1975. And the family moved into the house on Jane's birthday in October in 75. It was a wonderful lifestyle, living amongst the gum trees with many wild native animals and pets such as dogs, Oggy, Mungo and Tripper, who Dad loved very much, a cat called Sammy, and Dad's horse was called George, and Jane had Touche and Missy. Dad travelled each day into the city to work, but the traffic wasn't so bad back then as it is today. Joe, Jane and I will remember squashing into the Nissan 280ZX sports car as he dropped us off at school on his way into work. He played Mozart and Beethoven quite loudly in the car, but it was better than catching the bus, which took over an hour. Dad joined some of the local clubs, including the Warrandyte Tennis Club, the Warrandyte Liberal Party, and volunteered for the Warrandyte Diary, which is the local rag. Dad was generous with his time, and he'd always help other people. He'd lend a hand when asked. He would lend help to his neighbours or someone else in need. He donated to numerous charities. He provided sound advice to those who sought it out. He loved his family very much and enjoyed nothing better than an afternoon walk with his dogs along the Arrow River, especially if one of the children, grandchildren in particular were present, one or two of the grandchildren. We've also shared a lot of good times together, including lots of family dinners and functions. Our family has also had some wonderful experiences, including trips on yachts to Gips with Gip at Gippsand Lakes, skiing at Mount Buffalo, beach beach holidays at Apollo Bay, horse riding camps in the Victorian Alps, stays at, at many of the RACV club facilities around Victoria, and numerous trips to Melbourne dams to check the water levels. We were also very fortunate to go on some overseas holidays together, including returning to England to see our relatives uh, and also a big adventure to Singapore, Thailand and Burma in 1984. Burma's now called Myanmar, of course. Mum and Dad also had some wonderful holidays and trips without the kids. Um, and one of the most memorable for Dad was a trip to Europe for Mum and Dad's 25th wedding anniversary in 1988. They travelled in style on the Orient Express from London to Venice. Another favourite was on his golden wedding, on their golden wedding anniversary, where Mum and Dad went on a cooking and eating, mainly eating, tour of France with Gabrielle Gattay and Angela Gattay. Uh, and they said that this was, they only put on a small amount of weight when they came back. Dad was raised an Anglican, but I think he'd be one of the first to admit that he wasn't the best at practising his faith. Mum, the devout Catholic, prayed very hard and was the main influence on Dad's conversion to the Catholic faith back in 1991, at the age of 57. 
With support from mum and dad, he has been a regular churchgoer and volunteered for parish committees and for various roles with St Vincent de Paul. Dad has also been a parishioner of this parish for a number of years, as mentioned before. He has had a lot of admiration, he had a lot of admiration for the parish priest, Nicholas Dillon. Dad prayed regularly and after an inspiration, being inspired by Don Divo Basotti, on the 23rd of December 1999, he became an aspirant member of the Communitar de Fili de Dio, which we know as the CFD. This is a contemplative, prayerful Catholic community based in Florence, Italy. And only recently did Dad decide to become a consecrated member of the CFD, which occurred on the 28th of August this year from his sickbed. With thanks to uh, Father Doroteo and also Father Dylan for helping us and helping Dad. Dad has had a very long and full life. He was an inspiration to us all through his generosity and his quest for knowledge. His hard work, his can-do attitude, he had high principles and a lot of determination. My dad had a wonderful sense of humour and great insight to a lot of different issues. Above all, he loved his family and he had a strong faith. We pray now that he is with his maker in heaven. And this is one of his favourite verses. It's easy enough to be pleasant when life goes along like a song. But the man worthwhile is the one who will smile when everything goes dead wrong. For the test of the heart is trouble and it always comes with the years and the smile that is worth the praises of earth is the smile that shines through the tears. It's by Ella Wilcox, 1906. Rest in peace, Dad.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin our prayerful farewell for Anthony this morning, I'd like to welcome especially Father Doroteo, uh, who joins me to concelebrate this Requiem Mass. Also, I wish to pass on the apologies of Father Tony Doran, the uh, parish priest of Ringwood, uh, who uh, couldn't be here this morning, but wish to be remembered to you uh, at this time. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Antony, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. The Spirit you received is not the Spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the Spirit of sons and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God but creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation as we know has been groaning in one great act of giving birth, and not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The word of the God, the Thanks word of the Lord. According to Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 
Today is a difficult day, after some difficult months in what has been a particularly difficult year. Anthony's earthly struggle has come to an end, and we can find some comfort in the knowledge that he is now free from his physical suffering from illness. But for you, Valerie, and for Christopher, Joanna, and Jane, and all the extended family, the pain and sadness of separation from someone who has been such a part of your lives will still be very raw. In truth, though, our faithful departed are never really separated from us. As the liturgy reminds us, life changes. It does not end. The church accompanying us in our grief calls us forward in hope in the joyful remembrance of the risen Lord Jesus, who assured us that if we die with him, then we shall rise with him. We die with Christ in baptism, and in that moment we become sons in the Son. As we heard in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, and if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. The idea of sharing in Christ's glory is a much more enticing prospect than sharing in his sufferings. We naturally shun suffering, doing all we can to avoid it. For his part, Antony had a pragmatic approach to his illness and declining health. He accepted that there was not much he could do at the physical level and that the illness would soon take its course. He realized that the most important course of action was to prepare spiritually for the surrendering of his soul to God. His last visit to this church, which we arranged during the period of lockdown, was to go to confession, to celebrate the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, and to receive our Lord in Holy Communion. And after that, I was able to visit him at home a few times, allowing him to draw strength from the sacraments. It's significant that Antony made that final step of consecration in the community of the sons and daughters of God from his sickbed. He had embraced the suffering of illness and could identify more and more with the suffering Christ. Living the mystery of adoption as God's children means also living the mystery of the church. Antony's spiritual journey through life had brought him into the fullness of the Catholic faith, and with that a deepening relationship with Christ and the church. Antony had an appreciation of the church's great tradition of prayer and intellectual formation, along with the beauty of her liturgy and sacred arts. He would always be one of the first to arrive here for the 10.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday, impeccably dressed with jacket and tie, often spending up to half an hour before Mass quietly and preparing prayerfully for the sacred mysteries. In this month of November each year, the church places emphasis on the need to pray for the dead. The soul's journey continues after death 
and we assist the faithful departed with our prayers and penances on their behalf. This is what we do here today for Antony, who has been called from this life. We join in the Church's greatest prayer, the Holy Mass, offering Antony's soul back to our loving Father in union with the self-offering of Christ in the sacrifice of Calvary, which we are made present to in the mystery of the altar. Death inevitably and unavoidably brings us face to face with our mortality. It is the immortal life that Christ won for us through his victory over death that we hope to share in. The pledge of this new life is given to us already in the great treasure of the Eucharist, where the risen Lord nourishes his faithful people with the medicine of immortality. We can learn a lot from death and our approach to it. It was in his death that Christ taught us the greatest lesson on love as he freely gave up his life to save us. Antony taught us the beautiful lesson of approaching death with faith, the faith that means there is nothing to fear, but rather everything to look forward to. It is right that we mourn his death. Indeed, it's an essential part of our human reaction to the loss of a loved one in this life. But we know that the light of Christ pierces all darkness and leads us through to the glory of the resurrection. Antony embraced the cross of Christ, which is the path to true blessedness. The Beatitudes, that series of assurances of future blessedness given by our Lord in today's Gospel, is an important lesson for all of us to reflect on, especially as we pray for the soul of Antony. What Christ ultimately gives us in the Beatitudes is himself. If we learn to live and act, to literally imitate Christ, then our reward will be great in heaven. In Antony, we have someone who knew the value of faith and family, one who loved and served the Lord. He had discovered the path to true blessedness and remained faithful to it. The 16th of November, the day that Antony died, is the feast of St. Gertrude the Great. St. Gertrude is known as a saint with deep empathy for the souls in purgatory. And she would ask God at each mass to have mercy on them. God would reply to St. Gertrude that he would use whatever was offered to him for the faithful departed, according to his desire to show pardon and mercy. St. Gertrude was a Benedictine and a mystical writer, and she had the gift of miracles and prophecy. The Lord Jesus revealed to her his infinite love, and asked her to spread it with love for the suffering and for sinners. St. Gertrude's famous prayer is as follows, Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. It is a spiritual work of mercy to pray for the souls of the faithful departed. I'm sure Antony is most grateful for our efforts on his behalf, and especially as we join in offering this Requiem Mass. 
when we gather at the altar of the Lord for the celebration of the Mass, it is the whole church that gathers as we are mystically united with the saints in heaven and the souls being purified in purgatory. In this Requiem Mass, let us offer our prayers for the repose of Antony's soul, that whatever imperfections he may have had will be burned away through the fire of Christ's love. At the end of the dream of Gerontius, the great poem about the soul's journey after death, written by the English convert to Catholicism, St. John Henry Cardinal Newman, the soul's guardian angel accompanying the soul to its place of repose sings, softly and gently, Dearly ransomed soul, in my most loving arms I now enfold thee, and o'er the penal waters as they roll, I poise thee, and I lower thee, and hold thee. And carefully I dip thee in the lake, and thou without a sob or a resistance dost through the flood thy rapid passage take, sinking deep, deeper into the dim distance. Angels to whom the willing task is given shall tend and nurse and lull thee as liest. And masses on the earth and prayers in heaven shall aid thee at the throne of the Most Highest. Farewell, but not forever, brother dear. Be brave and patient on thy bed of sorrow. Swiftly shall pass thy night of trial here, and I will come and wake thee on the morrow. Farewell, farewell. As we bury Antony's mortal remains today, we echo the words of the angel, farewell, but not forever. Antony, may your soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Now stand and join in offering our prayers. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. For Opa, a child of God, an heir to the kingdom, that he may be held securely in God's loving embrace, now and for all eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Opa, who seek comfort and consolation, let us pray that God will heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we are gathered, that gathered together in God's kingdom again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our family have gone before us and await the kingdom. May God grant them an everlasting home with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cared for Opa, especially the staff at Eastern Palliative Care, that their works of service may be richly blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body may never feel forsaken by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, 
and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the yours be the sacrifice of my hand for the praise and glory of this name, for our good and the good of all's holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Antony, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful Judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, 
in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation at our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Antony, and all who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
to us also, your servants, that through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Antony may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Antony. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Antony in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Antony in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Antony forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In paradiso, de ducante angeli, in tuo adventu, suscipiante martires, et peducant te in civitatem sanctam,
peace, let us take our brother Anthony to his place of rest. 